Hello again everybody! Today on our plate is Chapter 16a, one of my personal favorites, so let's take a look at the overview. Yep, expect to see a lot of really big maps from here on out. We're officially at war. Similar to Chapter 7, 9, and 10, there are two routes to tackle the enemy positions. The most obvious is to just barrel down the front. There's basically no cover to be had this way, but with some careful charisma and support placing, you can make a nice phalanx and pretty quickly route the enemy. Or, you can send your forces all the way around the enemy line through the forests adjacent to the mountains. This will take a long time, and you'll have to dismount your riders to cross the hills, but the forest can provide good cover for the ballista. Also, just an FYI, all four of the lance armors on this map hold killer lances, so if you need some good pole arms, it doesn't get any easier than this. Besides all the slaughter at hand, there are some houses to visit and some spawning pirates that will try to plunder them. The top left contains a holy water, the middle right a bridge key to get to the enclosed island, and the bottom right gives you a knight's proof. The middle right doesn't give you an item, but instead a new ally if visited by Leaf. And only Leaf, so keep that in mind. There's also yet another new unit you may recruit here. As I've stated before, your Samson, named Arios, can be recruited by Karen if Olwen is dead or not recruited. And don't ask me why on either of those conditions. Anyway, as for reinforcements, aside from the aforementioned pirates, there are 8 Pegasi Riders that will surprise you with Horse Slayers on turn 15, but they will only move in range. And on turn 20, Konomore, a character that you can unfortunately only recruit in the B route, will show up with 11 Cavaliers all the way back near where you started. I'll tell you a special way to deal with him later. As for your loadouts, you have a whopping 16 unit deployment limit, so go nuts. Obviously, if you're getting Arios, you need Karen. But even then, I'd recommend bringing a couple flyers to help with the houses, Ballista and Pegasi, a staff user with a sleep staff and possibly warp and rescue staffs, a thief, and Olwen, either for killing her or for other purposes. If Arios is not on your two recruit list, then whip out Serum's sleep stick and rest him right away. He has amazing gear, and you don't want to waste it by just killing him. Word of caution though, unlike every other Siege Tome user in the game, Arios will in fact move to get in range to bolting you, so using bait with a magic boost is a good idea. Then, if you're recruiting him, just swoop in with Karen for the convo. So let's finally take a good look at this other Mage Knight. It's pretty hard to not directly compare and contrast Olwen and Arios. I mean, you can't have both, so inevitably any worth either has is also what you lose in the other. Boiling them both down to the basics leads to this pretty accurate description. Olwen is better at the mage part of Mage Knight, while Arios is better at the knight part. He starts with great stats aside from a pretty pathetic 6 build for a level 8 promoted unit, and has an A rank in Swords and Thunder Magic, letting him use all the cool toys away. You may also realize that Arios has in fact the exact same growth as Olwen, and these are also shared with two other units in the game. Arios also packs Prayer and Sun Sword, which when combined with his base 40 HP along with base 9, 10 magic and defense, makes him basically the best defensive unit in the game. However, as a trade-off for this, Arios is saddled with a PCC of Zilch, which makes his direct combat ability pretty terrible. But the reverse of both is true for Olwen, and like her, Arios needs a skill book to get the most of his abilities. In this case, the Wrath Manual from Chapter 8X. Which one is the better unit? Depends on what you need and your playstyle, so pick the other for your next playthrough and see how you like them. So then, with Arios either put to sleep or recruited, I'm going to show the direct route, though I will make mention of the other path. Arios' squad is filled with enemies to be cautious about. The Cavaliers all have sleep swords, and the Lance Knights have horse killers. Those former sleepy blades you should try to engage at range or with massive support. Any unit hit by them instantly falls asleep and must be woken up by a restore staff. And if you want one, you're going to have to put a Cavalier to sleep, as its 20 weight prevents theft, and there won't be any others until very late in the game, so think about it carefully. Your next obstacle is that bastard Kempf and his careful collection of Ballista. Kempf and his troops will not move out of the protective range of their siege engines, so to safely assault his position, there are three strategies. You could construct a phalanx with optimal support and charisma coverage and hope for the best, you can go around the back and use the forest as cover, as previously stated, or you can use Olwen. If Olwen gets next to Kempf, she can speak to him, which will cause him and his army to leave the ballista and rush you. This basically requires a warp staff, and thankfully there is an open space next to Kempf for Olwen to jump to. And if your plan is to have Olwen die so you can recruit Arios, this is essentially killing two birds with one stone. 
but if you want her to live, obviously you should immediately rescue her back. Anyway, without his ballista, Kempf is a pretty mediocre foe. Just watch out for the painful Thorin. As a side note, if any of his battalion remain when killed, they'll just disengage and flee the map. After Kempf is dealt with, you can safely go to the house on the small island with Leaf and recruit the person the bishop from chapter 15 was referring to, Sleuth. I'm not going to bother with an analysis here. This is all you need to know about Sleuth. He's an A-rank staff user with three movement stars, and he alone is better than all of B-Route's exclusive allies combined and more. Now, on to dealing with the reinforcements. The Pegasi are pretty much a joke as long as you don't send cavalry. They have terrible stats and the heavy lances they have will pretty much always drop their speed to zero. But Conamore is a different deal. He will rush your position right away, and his collection of powerful weapons and rapier-wielding cavaliers looks threatening, but he is in fact the biggest coward you will ever see. Here's what to do. Lure his force to either of these two areas and keep a flyer just outside of land range of the corresponding left exit to the area you have chosen. Once all of his troops are in said area, kill one cavalier and have your flyer block the left bridge while another unit blocks the right exit. If you did this right, Konomar and his troops will literally just sit there doing fuck all while you pick away at them. They will still counterattack, but after a single knight dies, he and his forces will never attempt to fight you and are actually trying to flee, but you've blocked off the only two land routes. So, send a thief to steal his awareness manual and any other items you want, and even though you probably pitter the poor bastard, kill Konomor, as if left alive, he will show up in Chapter 19 and be a much greater threat. Take him out now, so that doesn't happen. After all this, you just have the boss to deal with, and there isn't a whole lot of strategy to it. Brooks has super high defense, sits on a throne, and has two master weapons. You pretty much need to crack him open with magic. So if you can, try and get him to de-equip his master lance so he can't 1-2 range counter you. Also, here's just a neat tidbit. The master bow Brooks has, despite being A rank compared to the B rank brave bow, it's actually worse in every statistical way. Nice job, intelligence systems. Once you've finished your objectives, capture the fort to end the chapter. Next time, we swap over to 16b for the worst chapter in the game. Yay. See you then. Oh, but one more thing. Sorry this chapter has taken so long to get up, but I'm back in university now as a full-time student. I have no idea what my upload schedule will be like, but I'm hoping to do at least one chapter a week. Maybe two. These usually only take me about a day to record and do, so hopefully this works out for the better for everyone. Thank you again for watching and for sticking by. This has been Model Omega, and have a great weekend.